theme of the session was sort of building, you know, open or, or building communities. And so I'm going to give an overview sort of of how we've been working uh, with one of our communities, uh, a spinal cord injury community, and how we've been working towards building sort of, a, as Carol had talked about, a research commons, you know, for this, uh, uh, for this community. And so again, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, you know, really across uh, you know four different labs. Uh, when 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 you know when you break it down in terms of you know Marianne and myself, you know, sort of more on the informatics side, UCSF, uh, uh, University of Alberta, and then also uh, uh, Jessica Nielsen, who's moved from UCSF to University of Minnesota. You know, are really you know in the domain. Um, you know, and 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 working uh, with this data, and uh, you know as. You know, Carol had a slide on the comments, so I don't have to go over a lot of this really uh, in detail. But really, you know, what we're trying to create is a shared space for these researchers to really, you know, work with their data um, and in, in different contexts. Um, and that means, uh, you know, not just publishing a final data set, but maybe, you know, as they're collecting data, you know, with, uh, you, know, you know, the graduate students in the lab, you know, running uh, studies in animals, and so collecting the data as this data comes in. Um, and really trying to create that, that, that common space. And how do we, you know, as Carol said, sort of bring, you know, these fair principles into, you know, this community? Again, it's not, uh, you know, forcing these things uh, on the community, but really trying to figure out, you know, how to do it in the context of the work uh, that they're doing. And so the uh, commons that we've been Putting together um, is the Open Data Commons for spinal cord injury. Um, you know, we have now you know more than 40 labs signed up. Uh, you know, within this uh, uh, shared environment, um, you know there are a number of data sets you know that are that are in the space, and I'll explain a little bit about what that space is. And uh, you know, it's really focused around this concept of the lab, and so that was one of the first things. You know, and working with the community, how did they want to organize, you know, themselves in this commons, and how did they want to manage sort of the movement of data within the commons? And again, you know, all of this was driven through discussions, and I'll talk about this uh, in the second half. You know, about how we went through, you know, the various sort of uh, community engagement pieces, you know, to build out uh, this commons. And the other thing was, you know, well, how do you explain data sharing to the researcher? And this is, I think. You know, uh, Marianne came up with this, and this is one of the uh, you know best sort of uh, uh, analogies you know that I've that we've seen in terms of data. You know, comparing it to a restaurant, right? So you know, when you get in, you know, your your ingredients, you know, that's sort of the private space. You have you know the the, the back end, you know, where things show up on the loading dock. Then things you know are, are are in the in the prep kitchen, you know, and you can see a little bit more of what's happening. And then when data becomes public. Um, you know, it goes out uh, sort of into the dining room, right? So you have these different stages in terms of how uh, the data flows. Um, and what we've really been trying to do is focus so on the left side there, you see sort of like an instructional screen, you know, with a couple options given to the researcher. So how do we guide the researchers through these flows of how you want them, you know, to contribute data so that their data ends up, you know, within the system, you know, and then making sure that you know, the, uh, the actual uh, data, you know, that you have access to grows. So what I'm showing here is that you'll see that, you know, on the bottom there, there's a data set that's private access. That means that I have access to it in my lab that I'm a member of. And you can actually be a member of multiple labs. So you can actually have, uh, you know, uh, uh, data coming from multiple labs that you might be collaborating with. Um, You'll see then that there's a green one, uh, the public uh, data set. So there are some public data sets that have come out. And I think the resolution's a little, little low, so it might be a little harder to see. And then the larger pullout are, are the, the, the yellow items. These are the ones that are shared within the commons. So these are the data sets that people have shared you know, outside of their lab you know, with sort of the researcher community. And so these are the ones that are you know, uh, not completely public, but shared within uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the commons, you know, researchers that are, are part of uh, the system. And one of the pieces that we've been trying to pull together is how do you actually put into place uh, methods to actually do, you know, some of, for example, the alignment of data elements, you know, and how do you make that something that's, you know, intuitive for a researcher to do in terms of, 
you know, one of the big goals of projects like these, you know, and when we're talking about interoperability and reusability, is that when one, when one describes age or when one describes, you know, an outcome measure, that if someone's describing the same outcome measure, you know, that these data sets can be pooled across research labs. Um, and, you know, that's just, you know, a, a process that is not very fun to do. Um, but how do you, how can we embed that sort of in, you know, the process of this workflow? And so what we've been doing, you know, we've been tying this to some of the systems we have so we can sort of, uh, sort of have community input into, you know, the data elements that are described. People can assign those and then actually, you know, is that, and this is actually a, a focus of the next phase of the project that's just begun in terms of trying to make these workflows, uh, you know, more intuitive, um, hopefully a little engaging for researchers so that these, uh, these actually happen. You know, the last part is sort of the data publication piece. You know, so once a data set is published, you know, through the system, you know, uh, it gets its DOI. You know, we have the schema.org metadata, which you see on the bottom right. You know, so, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, the data set is, uh, you know, meeting some of the, uh, you know, the basic principles uh, that we've been talking about. But all this is sort of built upon you know, a number of efforts, you know, with community building. And so we've been very fortunate that we've worked with, you know, these other labs, you know, UCSF, University of Alberta, University of Minnesota, that have been very engaging and also engage well with the broader community, right? So we've had very good interactions with uh, sort of the broader spinal cord injury community. And again, the spinal cord injury community is large, but it's not too large, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a decent size. Um, and, you know, back in 2016, you know, when this project, uh, you know, first was starting up, there was actually a workshop, you know, initial community workshop that was put together with funding from NIH and also some private foundations to bring together the researchers, you know, and the funding agencies, you know, to discuss what, what, what this open data commons might look like, um, you know, and really talk to, um, you know, the researchers about the possibilities, but also really get their input as what they want and what they would use, um, you know, to really sort of set the stage for sort of the initial prototype development uh, that was sort of funded uh, in, this, in this period. And there was actually a paper written uh, sort of about the workshop, um, you know, so uh, Callahan et al. in 2017, and they did a couple uh, uh, assessments of uh, the participants, and again, most of them, you know, were, uh, you know, from the spinal cord injury preclinical uh, world. Uh, you know, there were other uh, clinical researchers there, bioinformaticians, non-governmental funders, and governmental funders, right? So it was a good mix of, of people who were attending. You know, and then looking sort of at the, uh, you know, community profile, you know, how do, you know, people share data? And, and really, you know, it was sharing sort of within you know, the laboratory, within the local environment. So those are those first four bars. You know, that's sort of where, you know, the majority of the sharing was, but not with the broader, uh, with the broader community. And what were they actually using, you know, you know, in terms of managing their data, and it was paper and spreadsheets, right? So this is sort of the community that, you know, in terms of what we had to, you know, you know, we, you know as Carol said, you know, uh, you know, giving tools that the researchers won't use you know, is not going to work, right? So how do we work with, you know, the paper, the spreadsheets that they were using, you know, to develop that system? You know, this initial meeting led to sort of some initial developments of sort of alpha releases and things that we would test internally, again, with the internal groups that we were working with. And then we went uh, sort of to uh, uh, the American Spinal Injury Association in 2017 um, and, again, tried to, um, you know, sort of get some feedback from the community, but really to uh, start providing some information about what FAIR was to the broader community um, and uh, uh, provide, uh, you know, information on, you know, what the system was going to be like. And then also that ended up also being a way to sort of recruit individuals, you know, for example, to the steering committee, people that were interested in contributing to sort of, you know, guidance in terms of what we were, what we were developing. Now, one of the sort of critical pieces for any, uh, you know, sort of project to, uh, 
uh, I think, move forward in, 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 in many instances is that you have at least you know, one or two success stories that you can point out what the benefit is um, of data sharing. And many communities have these, um, you know, and it's important to highlight these. So one of the ones you know, from the spinal cord injury uh, uh, work was uh, uh, you know, Jessica had done some uh, data analysis across a number of data sets. And getting these data sets together was actually you know, a huge amount of work because she had to deal with all the spreadsheets, all the paper. Um, you know, she, she termed it dumpster diving, right? You'd go to a lab to collect their data and they'd throw you a box of you know, papers and spreadsheets and disks and she had to take that you know, and, and, put, and collate it into something that, that was usable to do this analysis. Um, and so, you know, out of this analysis, you know, there's actually something that was really, you know, uh, uh, interesting that came out and, you know, looked at sort of, you know, what is the effect of hypertension, uh, hypertension in terms of predicting long-term recovery, you know, from, uh, you know, a, a spinal cord injury, uh, um, you know, based on, uh, you know, the findings across a number of different studies. Um, and then this has moved on now to further studies looking at this. But again, you know, this is one sort of example of how, um, you know, pooling together data, sort of the community coming together can actually uh, provide uh, insights, you know, that haven't been found before. And, you know, working, you know, you know providing, you know, such examples, I think, uh, you know, helps sort of galvanize, um, you know, how, you know, people can see uh, benefits uh, from, uh, you know, being part of a commons. So, you know, following on from uh, sort of some of the initial meetings, you know, one of the things that was instituted um, was a steering committee. So out of that first workshop, you know, and the subsequent uh, workshops, we had a steering committee that we'd uh, get together with uh, periodically, and we'd sort of use them also as a sounding board for policies and procedures. So how does one work with the community? What are the guidelines? You know, how does someone, you know, if someone comes in and wants to register a lab, what's required for that lab to be recognized by the community, <laughs> right? So some of these, you know, community decisions, you know, for how, uh, you know, one operates, uh, you know, uh, virtually in this space. And so the Fair uh, Sky Ahead meeting uh, that was held at uh, SFN uh, in uh, 2017 um, was really a, uh, a stakeholder meeting uh, for, the, for, the, for the project. It was a pre-meeting at SFN um, and you know, it was really something where we sort of provided progress again to funders and to uh, steering committee members that were there. And it was really you know, a, a, a place to talk about you know, some of the things in terms of also how do we move forward. Um, again, because we were building a prototype, you know, something you know, that you know, people could shoot arrows at to you know, say, yes, this works, this doesn't work, and, and how do we want to you know, move this forward? And to sort of help us or help guide us into you know, defining uh, sort of uh, what the future uh, uh, road map for the project would look like. Um, and, you know, building on that road map, you know, the next year, um, we actually had the first, uh, what we were calling a datathon at SFN. And so this was an activity that was held at SFN, but we've also held a number of these activities um, at smaller meetings, at some of the other spinal cord injury meetings, and we've also had uh, some of the postdocs uh, uh, who are working in some of the labs go out to other labs, you know, in terms of working with individual laboratories and how to use, you know, the system in terms of working with the data. Um, and so really, you know, this was, you know, a first, uh, uh, you know, initial uh, meeting where, you know, we could try and demonstrate some of the benefits. You know, we had some hands-on participation in the meeting again, you know, at SFN, you don't have that much time, but again, it, it, it's a good place to sort of, uh, you know, get people uh, together, uh, you know, get them signed up, uh, you know, answer some of the initial questions. And so really, what we've been working through is sort of this, you know, interaction between, you know, what we're developing sort of in the context of, um, you know, the, 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 the collaboration we have, you know, in terms of, you know, the participants, you know, who are developing uh, the commons and engaging with the broader community. Um, 
And the next phase of the project um, really uh, is trying to build on that. Um, and one of them is this community curation process. So again, one of the, you know, uh, you know, Carol, uh, I think she had like the little magic wand when it went from the lab to the repository, right? That some magic happens and, you know, your data goes from the lab and ends up really nicely in a repository. Um, and that is a lot of work and a lot of effort. But how, again, how can we start moving some of those uh, uh, tools, some of those processes into the work of, you know, uh, basically working with your data in the system you know, uh, you know, when you're uh, uh, initially doing this. So the first mile, uh, you know, trying to, get the, trying to get these procedures working earlier uh, in the data collection process. And so developing a community curation process and also what does it mean to have uh, data that's, you know, in the community and data that's public. So what is sort of the, you know, the, the, the review, you know, to publish data sets? you know, through the commons. Um, and, you know, one of the ideas, you know, that's, uh, you know, been invest be being looked at, uh, you know, has been discussed with, you know, the steering committee and others is sort of the, the formation of a curation board, you know, sort of similar to an editorial board, um, but in this case for data sets, you know, that there's some minimal standards that these data sets have to meet. And again, you know, you know, FAIR is very new to all communities that's out there. And so in this community, this is one of the things that we're trying to define. You know, what does that mean? You know, other things, integration of analytic tools, now that we have a base, you know, for people to get their data in, you know, tying them into some of the, you know, uh, tools for, uh, you know, large scale data analysis, machine learning across data sets is something that, you know, is seen as a way to engage, uh, you know, different types of researchers within the system. And again, broadening it out to uh, you know, a larger community, more outreach, more outreach, and more outreach. So I, I'm really trying to, again, build this uh, in the context you know, of, the, you know, of the community. And uh, you know, just wanna thank you know, all the collaborators, you know, the steering committee who's been you know, uh, giving us very good feedback uh, and who've been engaging uh, you know, with us and um, you know, the you know, both the, uh, the foundations that have provided, you know, a lot of uh, support, you know, for the development. Um, and then also, you know, uh, everyone that's supported, because it's, it's sometimes hard to get meetings together, you know, in terms of funding meetings, you know, to bring the community together. And this is something that's critical to do, but it's not something that's very easy to put in, you know, your grant application. So we've gotten a lot of support from foundations and also some from NIH you know, to hold these meetings, to host these meetings so that we can bring people together um, and engage them in the development, uh, you know, of this system. So again, uh, you know, uh, thank everyone uh, and thank you for listening. And, uh, you know, I do have a demonstration table upstairs, so if anyone wants to stop by and chat, uh, feel free to do so.